Cell of doubt, our biggest enemy. Am I good enough? Should I quit and should I just start working as a sign spinner? They have a bright future, no? Well, stop doubting yourself and start testing. I have a simple tool to measure your After Effects skill level and that is this video. Find out what skill level that you are and I bet that 99% of you guys won't even finish our pro level. But that's for later, let's first start looking at the noob level or the beginner skills. I have a bunch of animated layer properties so or some neat adjustments, meaning that I can start searching, opening up every single layer and every single property. Ain't nobody got time for that. And that's why you need to use the U shortcut, showing me every single keyframe on the selected layers. And now that I've found my keyframes, it's time for the second tip. I want to make sure that the animation starts exactly at the 13th frame and only lasts for 9 frames. Like a real noob, you can start counting frames, or you can control click on the time display on the left. It will now show the frame instead of seconds. And that makes you move even more precise than a brain surgeon. All right, you probably already know those tips, I hope, but let's see if you know this one. How can I remove all the effects from a layer? No, I'm not deleting them one by one. I'm just going to use a shortcut, Control shift e Boom, I deleted that faster than my browser history. Now the next tip will be a masking one, my favorite thing to do in After Effects. Is that sarcasm? When you use the normal pen tool to mask, you get hard corners. And if you want rounded corners, you need to hold down and drag. Well, that takes too much time. I can also enable the roto bezier function, making every corner I make rounded. Now, you're doing good so far. We're like somewhere right here in the skill test. Now, for the next tip, I'm gonna need to feather the mask. And with the mask feather property, I can easily do that. But wait, it feathers the entire mask equally. I don't want that. To have the most control over the feather, I have to use the mask feather tool. This will give me the possibility to add points on the mask, which can control the amount of feather, making it possible to apply different feather strengths on a single mask. Whoa! Hey, damn, that was close. Jeff, stop using your phone and pay attention. I already know all these basic tips. Haven't you seen my Faroe Islands video? You have, Janik, right? It was amazing. I had so many positive reactions on it, and that's probably because of the music. Because I was able to license Seeger Russ, the song that I had in mind, and was able to use that in my video and even monetize it on YouTube, which is amazing. Really? Aren't you worried you're gonna get cancelled or copyright striked? How do you not know this, Janik? With Licked, you can license over a million mainstream songs. And with such recognizable music in my edits, my watch time will skyrocket. Everybody will like my videos, telling me in the comments that I have the best edits and music, all because because of Licked. Now, haven't you noticed that with every video we upload where we use mainstream music again, that the retention is just so much better? Work all day and then I wake up. Now, the best thing is that I can use my content with mainstream music on every social media platform there is. So now we can post dance videos wherever I want, meaning I have more time to create. Now, just sit on tight, Janik. I'm gonna be bigger than Mr. Beast. That sounds really good. I also want to grow my YouTube channel. Then what are you waiting for, Janik? Just go sign up to Licked right now while the discounts are still active. You can find the link in the description down below to start using mainstream music in your videos. All right, you can continue. Let me put my phone away. <sighs> Students. Now, be honest, class. Did you know all the five tricks? If so, then you passed the noob section. I mean, the beginner section. Which means that we can go to the next level, which is the okay level or the advanced level. But let's start with a simple one. Again, I have an animation of multiple keyframes, but I want the animation to be shorter and thus faster. However, I don't want to move each one separately and also I want to keep the proportional distance between the keyframes. Now to do this, I simply select every keyframe, hold the Alt or Option key and take the last keyframe to drag around. That makes the entire animation longer or shorter. Now the next tip is quite new as Adobe just added this feature in the latest updates. But when you're doing VFX, I often use a track match to remove certain parts of a layer. However, this could easily become a mess because you couldn't use a track match for multiple layers. Layers. And that leaves you with so many layers in the end. But that's in the past now. With the new update, I can use a single track mat as many times as I want, and it doesn't need to sit right above the corresponding layer. And that makes my project so much more clean. Whew, I need a coffee. Jake, what are you doing? Give me that. What is this, kindergarten? It's art. 
Seriously, you know what? See me after class. Now, speaking about children, did you ever have a project with so many parented layers that you lost complete overview? Well, I have this all the time, but the solution is simple. I just select the main layer to which everything is linked. Then I right click and choose select children and voila, my overview is back. And if I want, I can give them the same color label to avoid confusion later on. Now, the next tip is the one that you would use every day. However, it's still good to know. Like the fact that you can't lick your own elbow so let's say you want to scale your composition to the same size as your footage or object. Now playing the guessing game in the composition panel is always fun, but if you want to be precise, you can simply create a region of interest. Once done, go to the composition tab on top and here select the crop comp to region of interest option. And voila, it's scaled super precise. Now did you ever try to create a 3D text inside After Effects? Who didn't? But do you also know about the trick that I'm about to reveal? I want to extrude my text giving it more depth. But to do that, I first need to change the After Effects 3D renderer. Go to the Composition Properties and under 3D Renderer, choose the Cinema 4D option. But next to that, you'll have a button to change the quality of the 3D as well. Next, toggle the text to 3D layer and now you will get two more property groups, Geometry and Material Options. Now with the Geometry Options, you can determine the extrusion depth and bevels. With the Material Option, you can adjust the Diffusion, Specular, Reflections and so on. However, something really important, you need an After Effects light source to make the 3D work. Now tell me, did you get a 10 out of 10? Without cheating, let me know in the comments down below. And now, let's get mental and look at the pro tips. The people of the higher order. Now the first pro tip feels like cheating. I mean, we all know that I hate masking. As a professor, I want to share my time with my students, not the pen tool. Alright, I'll be honest, I'd rather drink coffee in a teacher's room. Anyways, to cheat, I use the auto trick option, which you can find under the Layer Menu tab. Now, it has its restrictions, but it can really save you time in certain situations. Like for our Ghostbusters video, I needed to mask out a wiggling LED strip. Well, Autotrace did that for me. It's that easy. Alright, we're getting there, almost near the finish line. The next tip feels like cheating again. The pro section is basically just cheating. But why should you do something the hard way when it can be done easier? Of course, I'm talking about using After Effects scripts. This is sort of an automation for your After Effects workflow. The internet is full with super handy scripts that you can download. Just do a quick search. There are paid, but also tons of free scripts out there. Now, we use such scripts all the time here at the studio, one of which is a 3D normalization script. It basically makes your 3D camera tracking better, centered, and aligned. And that makes our VFX workflow so much easier. Now, as a teacher, I'm also constantly learning and recently I discovered a life-changing effect. When doing a green key, you can remove all the green, but sometimes you also remove the motion blur of your actions. Luckily, I have a solution to that, the Refine Hard Matte Effect. This effect lets you adjust multiple properties of your mats, like the feather, the contrast, you can decontaminate the edge colors, but you can also add back motion blur. That is game-changing. And look at that progress bar go! The next tip is gonna be for the real pros. When doing VFX, you work a lot with pre-comps, and sometimes you need to go in those pre-comps to change stuff. However, you also want to see how it looks in the final comp, but then you need to go back to the root comp. It's like inception for comps. However, I can solve that. You just have to lock your root composition window and open a new one by going to the view menu on top, and here you can choose new viewer and voila, we have two composition windows. If we now navigate to the inside of our pre-comp, the new window will show that pre-comp, while the locked window retains to display the root comp. So now you can see what your adjustments do in both comps. And that brings me to the finals. That means we're right here, guys. One last thing to go. When I parent a layer to another layer, it will follow its animation. We all know that. But did you know you can do more than that? What if you made an animation of a simple square, and in that square you want to link a logo or whatever? Well, without extra steps, it is possible to link and place it inside that square. You just have to hold down shift while you use the pick whip tool to link it. This will automatically snap the logo on the same position and rotation as the square. Then with its own properties, you can fine tune it a little bit more and voila, your motion design workflow will be easier than passing our After Effects skill test. Look at that, guys! We made it! Now, did you actually made it past the pro level or not? Let me know in the comments down below. And now, let's do a Premiere Pro video editing test. You can check out that video here on my left. So I hope to see you there in my class. Thank you for watching, and as always, 
Stay creative.